All right, good morning, good afternoon, good night, good evening, whatever it may be, we are going to be assembling the Swamp Runner kit. Now, what you see is the Mud Skipper kit. This is what we water tested and did all that fun stuff, so you can click the link up above once that video is out. But this video is the assembly of the Swamp Runner kit. So, without further ado, let's get into it. Now, I am going to be moving this motor by myself so I may not be able to get the best angles for you but I will definitely try to get it um, once I get it on the actual engine bracket and get the engine bracket on the transom mount and get it safe to work on then I can start getting some good angles for you so once we get that done then it'll be smooth sailing from there so let's get into it So this is what we are assembling today, Swamp Runner Kit. Go ahead, open it up, gives you all your warnings, product warranty. Just say no for the product warranty. It is a lifetime warranty of the coupler housing and the coupler shafts. The main thing is that you're using an aluminum prop. That aluminum prop is meant to be the sacrificial piece. It is supposed to break before anything else. If you are able to break the coupler housing or the coupler shaft, which would be very hard to do, then they do warranty that for a lifetime. Um, next is you have your parts list, tells you everything that you need to assemble it. And then we start getting into the directions. Uh, uh, make sure all your pieces are there. So they want you to go ahead and put the shaft on it first, but we're going to go ahead and jump to uh, step seven and eight right now because I want to get the engine on the boat and uh, sitting that way before I start working and putting the shaft on it. We're doing it a little bit out of sync, but that's the way that I have to do it. So this was on the package. This is for like a, a Honda. They'll go over that in the instructions. I don't have a Honda, so I don't need to worry about it. So you have four small bolts with four lock washers, and then you have four big bolts with big washers, a lock nut. These four are gonna be for the coupler. That goes up a uh, coupler to the motor. And then these four are to mount the engine to the engine base. And that's what we're going to be doing right now. So as you see, I have this under the engine. So it is propped up. So I'm going to go ahead and get two bolts in. You should be able to do this uh, with two people. It would be a lot easier. Um, with one person, not so much. Now with these engines... I like to go up from the bottom. Let's see what they say in the directions. Yeah, see, they want you to go up. I have it sitting like this. You have a washer, you have your lock washer, and then your nut. You want to have that big lock washer, the big, just regular washer, on top of the engine. You just put it, the bolt up straight through, and then you put your washer on, your lock washer, and then your nut. All right, so we went ahead and got two bolts in. I do have four bolts in, but two were tight and two were loose. So now that they're on there and tight, I'm gonna go ahead and get it on the transom bracket. And then once I have it up there, I'll tighten the other two bolts so that way it's easier to work on. So I don't know if you have a better way of doing it or not, but to find center in the transom, I like to measure from the bottom. And then you could use uh, a square to measure up. This is just a piece of rubber. Came off a of dishwasher insulation. All right, so now I get to put the engine in here now.
she's in there. Now we've got to tighten up the other bolts. Again, these are 17 millimeter. Went ahead and put this sawhorse under. So that way when I take that tail off, this engine is gonna to wanna to fall forward. So this way it'll catch on here. That way I can put the new shaft and everything on there. All right, so we just took that shaft off. Now these aren't so hand friendly when you start getting really tight. So I would really recommend using um, an open-ended wrench and just putting it over the ear and loosening it or tightening it. Step three, loosen the Allen head set screws on the coupler shaft. Install keyway onto the keyway slot of the engine PTO shaft. The keyway is supplied by the engine manufacturer. Slide the coupler shaft onto the engine PTO shaft. Apply medium strength Loctite to the set screw threads. Tighten the set screws hand tight by inserting a number three metric Allen wrench into the hex heads of the M6 1.0 set screws. Tighten to a maximum of five foot pounds torque, 60 inches per pound. Uh, grease the coupler shaft with zero weight grease. If available, number one or number two grease can be used. Pack grease into the flanged end of the coupler housing until it is one third full. So the zero weight grease is like a corn head grease. Install the coupler housing onto the coupler shaft with zerks pointed upward. Align the four holes located on the coupler housing flange with the four bolt holes on the engine side cover. Install the four coupler housing bolts with lock washers through the holes of the coupler housing flange and into matching engine bolt circle holes located around the engine PTO shaft. As these four bolts are tightened, the floating internal radial bearing will reposition itself, allowing the coupler flange to mate flush with the engine side cover. Apply anesthes compound to the internal threads of the sleeved female coupler nut. Using the coupler tool and another long flat tool, install the sleeved female coupler nut into the coupler housing and thread it onto the coupler shaft until it is hand tight. Engine operation will tighten the nut further. None of the other kits have this, but this is a real nice thing that I like. Because if you are running it on the outside of your bolt, on the outside of your boat, and this comes loose and it falls off, then you lose it. Now that we have the cotter pin installed, we'll go ahead and move on to the next step. So this is the tiller handle. It has that nice small bend to it. With this tiller handle, you have different holes in it. You have two different bolts, and I'll pull those bolts out for you. So you have two different bolts. One has a pokey end, and one does not. It's flat. You see the difference? With this, you have different positions. See, if you have it straight up, you want this pokey one at the front hole to go into that hole. If you have it at an angle, you want to go ahead and move it towards the back because that's where your hole is going to be. So I'm probably going to have it straight up like this. And you're going to want the pokey one in the front. And normally that's where the pokey bolt should be. That's where mine was located. Go ahead and put this in. But with those holes being there, it'll stop this handle from twisting or coming loose because it's a big long lever. So if you're pulling up or moving it and these are, even if they are tightened all the way, no bolt that like goes through that hole like this one does, then that handle can turn and that won't be good. So what I'm going to advise you to do, because I don't know if it's going inside of that hole or not. I'm going to go ahead and tighten down this back one just so I can line it up and make sure be confident that it's in that hole. And then go ahead and once you have those bolts pretty tight go ahead and tighten that bottom one all the way to the bottom. So you see this is your handle. 
see how it has that pattern same pattern in here so you just want to match it up so just find the position that you like if you want it more down have it all the way down standing up this would be nice sitting down I can still reach it maybe like a 30 35 degree angle so I just left it on there and then just really forced it on there use a number four and it's just the hex head on the other side time for the throttle cable all right so just as we explained all of that lines up and then you just tighten everything down I'm gonna go ahead and feed this through Just no discovering. Put it up through here too. This handle was a size 4. The safety kill switch is a size 3. You have 4 screws on the bottom. Go ahead and undo all 4 of those. So this will fit nice and tight like this. I'm going to go ahead and just get the screws in their slots. So that way when I turn it over, it won't the screws won't fall out. Go ahead and put it like that. So that way all the wires are running towards the back, towards the rear. And now I just tighten all these down. You can put this wherever you want. Now I'm probably gonna wrap these wires up and use this top hole to run them because I can put a little bit of a bend in them. Unlike that, unlike that throttle cable, I didn't want to put too harsh of a bend in that. Now with your handle, this should mount flush. It's meant to fit perfectly on this handle. One thing I found to chase wires real good is uh, this is just regular wire without any of the wire in it. This is just the insulation. under and then we'll just put it right there on that screw head. This is one wire, that's that long wire. You need to add a little pony section on there. And then that's your ground wire that we just put in the front of the engine. So this is your long wire, we just need a short piece of wire. You may be able to cut a small section off of the long wire to use it for that pony section. And then we need to get a barrel connector, we need a male and a female. All right, so the way that your kit is gonna come already is looking like this. This is the yellow wire that they talk about using. You're gonna do it with this yellow wire. I could most likely do that black wire, but I'm just gonna go ahead and do it with this yellow one. All right, so this is our hot wire, the black. This is our pony section, which is the white. Make sure you have it run the way that you want it to.
connected. So then I'll just wrap them in um, electrical tape and then bunch it back up. Just so you guys know, this is the same bushing as a green one. The first batch of these came out black, and that's why this one is black. Normally you'd be getting a green one, and that's what we'll be putting on now. This is what comes stock with these kits. They do have another black one that they call their bayou bushing. I just don't want you to confuse the color. So I'm gonna go ahead and swap it out with a green one, so that way you know that I'm running a green one. This is a better quality than the orange one. This is a step below the bayou bushing, a step be above the original orange bushing that you see with the other kits. So just like that, we got the green bushing. Only one way to put the props on. You got a skinny end and a bigger end. This is tapered. So bigger end goes first. You also have a keyway slot right here. Line it up, got a lock washer. And then put a little uh, thread tight in here. It'll make sure it doesn't fall off in the water. See that play? That's not good. So what we gotta do is get our, uh, our shaft here. We gotta push it further up that way. Thank you. 